Hi and welcome to part 8 of the series of videos that I'm making on the Henglong 16th scale military truck. Um, <clears throat> so far, just a quick recap, we've put hobby grade RC into the truck which means we've got proportional steering and, <clears throat> and we're using kind of a hobby grade RC transmitter. Um, we've installed some windows which I think makes it a lot more realistic and we've got a, a working sound unit in here for the next stage and I think I'm getting towards the end of upgrading this track to be honest the next stage is going to be the lights and <clears throat> I'm going to start by putting some different covers over the lights here because I think that they look a little bit unrealistic and we're also going to be putting lights in the back when the when the truck comes in stock form it does have the lights it has these it has these front lights which um, come on all the time that you're driving um, I do have the option I suppose of having lights that I can switch on and off but to do that <coughs> I'd have to install a four channel receiver into the truck if I wanted to have the sound independently controlled as well and to be quite honest I'm not really that bothered at this stage and um, okay I'm going to be slightly making this up as I go along because I haven't I haven't done this before but it should be reasonably straightforward the key to it is probably going to be to be very careful about where I put the wiring after to make sure the wires aren't too long etc and to make sure that nothing's hanging down right so without further ado let's get started right so the lights that I'm going to be using are just standard um, lights that you that you that you get in the RC lighting sets. So <clears throat> from there, and they're all five millimeter. I could use three millimeter for the back. I don't have any to hand, and I'm not really worried. So there's the there's the white one. There's the red one again. They're they're all five millimeter and they're clear when they're not switched on. For the for the lighting unit, I'm using this fairly small one here, which I had in one of my other trucks. I think it's probably an axial item. It doesn't have any branding on it, but that's what I think it probably is. And so that I can test things as I go along. I'm just going to be using this 5 volt um, Eneloop pack um, just really for convenience because it will give me some idea of how things are looking. So the first thing to do is just to, is just to test to make sure that all of the lights are actually working. So I'll just get this plugged in. So the unit is now live. I'll plug the... I plug the red lot in one end. There we go. The red lights are on, and <clears throat> and the white at the other. Here we have white lights. Something which I have found is that. With the with the LEDs, they tend to not be very bright from too many angles until you head on, and then they're absolutely bright and too bright. So, what I've tended to do is I've tended to sand them off a bit, and it's quite good to do it with the lights on so that you can see what the effect is as you go along, and you get a much softer light certainly from um, head on and you get the light coming out at a greater angle so and by having the light on I can see any bits which are missing So, if I just make a comparison, I don't know how easy it is to see on the video, but 
you get a very different kind of light pattern from it when you when you um, do that and <clears throat> I don't know whether the video is showing the color but it's showing quite a nice red on here um, I'll just do the others quickly then I'll put the video recorder back on again right that only took a couple of minutes and <clears throat> so we have all four lights slightly more diffused and I think that they're going to be better in the truck right the next thing that I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to put some covers on these on these lights here because it really looks as if there's something missing now having having searched through my bits and pieces box and had a good look round um, I have found some light covers that will work and they are I believe actually axle numbers at the moment they're sitting on this um, bumper that I kind of don't use and um, <clears throat> if I just pop a lens out there we go they come with little tabs on them and I would think that they're probably quite orderable as a spare part so I'll just chop the little bits which are used to locate them they are they are actually quite a good fit The, for the for the truck now <clears throat> now with um this with this sort of joint i don't tend to use super glue i tend to use the um <clears throat> canopy glue um it isn't it isn't going to mist and um if you really change your mind about something you can get them off again so just use my cocktail stick trick those on so just get some glue out of the end there yeah this the stick allows me to be much more controlled in the application of glue um, on this occasion I'm actually going to put the glue around the lights themselves and unlike super glue this is this is this has got a reasonable working time which means that I'll be able to turn the lights around and get them the right way up. I'll try not to smear glue all over the, the front of the cab. There you are. And this and this and this canopy glue. The other good thing about it is it dries clear, so you won't be able to see it afterwards. Just trying to get it to stay on there. Quite hard to get them to line up straight. Just flip it round. I think that's okay. Do the other one. You don't need a whole lot of glue, just just enough recovering.
right, that looks pretty straight to me and I think that, and I think that, that is going to be an improvement over just leaving them open. Now while those fronts are drying because it will probably take about half an hour or so for them to dry um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the back end of the truck because that's where it's going to be most difficult because the front end I'm just going to replace the LEDs which are already in there and they will just slide in I know that um, <clears throat> so starting with the other end you can see that we've got these plastic kind of painted fake lights and that's where I'm going to want to put the the, the bulbs in so the first thing I'm going to need to do is to take off, is to take off the flatbed at the back that's just two screws careful not to lose them and we can easily see in here they are they are pretty hollow and <clears throat> the key to it to get these bulbs in is because they they're quite similar in diameter to the sort of base here so we're going to want the bulbs to sit kind of about there not protruding too much so what I'm going to do is rather than start with a 5mm drill bit I'm actually going to start with a tiny drill bit first and try and get that in the middle And just make a pilot hole in the first place. That's in, and I can go straight through to the other side as well. Then I'm going to go through with a slightly bigger bit. This one I think is probably 2mm. We seem to be okay. I'm then going to go in with a 4.5mm bit. I probably don't actually need the drill for this because Doing it slowly like this means that I'm in control and there's no danger or there's less danger of me removing too much material. That's okay. Right, I think I'm probably safe to use the drill now. set on low speed and just go in really slowly right we're still probably not quite big enough for the for the bulbs I we're just slightly too small I'll get a five mil bit let's go in incredibly slowly with this Okay. 
so I don't snap anything. I'm actually going to take the um, bridge off the back of the um, <coughs> LED. Both holes drilled and both bulbs trimmed down in size. Let's just see if everything's going to fit. That looks pretty perfect to me there. Same here. Want to have the bulbs protruding by about the same amount. And I want them both to be straight as well. That looks about right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix both bulbs in place, and this time I am going to use some super glue. I'll use the medium thickness, not a massive amount, just in case I ever want to get them out again. So let's just do the first, do one over here first, a quick blob of glue there. And then I'll use the activator just to fix it in place. That's one. And then the other one. Good. Happy with that. I think that that's going to be fine. Right now, the next job to do is to root the wires, and this is, I think, quite a crucial stage. If you if you want to have a tidy job afterwards, where the wires don't get snagged and snap and that kind of thing. So I'm bringing them up underneath here. I could put them over the top, but I don't really feel the need to. And I know that I have a little bit of space when the back is down for the wires to actually go over the crossbars here. And I think that's going to be fine. I'm tempted just to use a bit of tape to keep those in place. So I'm going to use some. me a masking tape don't need too much of it just to keep it all nice and tidy it uh, won't be particularly visible afterwards and my experience with this tape is that when you put it on it seems to stay in place for many years so that's that one it's good try and get them roughly the same as each other that's that so the wires 
are actually going to come over the crossbars and this piece here should go down easily on the top. Before I put this back, I think it's time to mount the, mount the lighting unit somewhere and when I put the sound unit in I put it over here so I think that I'm probably going to want to put the um, lighting unit on the other side on top of the fuel tank. So I'll just take the truck cab off, which we're going to have to do anyway to get to the wires and the front lights. So <clears throat> you can see here where the wires were for the for the for the for the front headlights. These should come out fairly easily. So that I can replace them with the with the other ones. But while I'm here I might as well just do that. That's one there's a little ridge which is there to hold them in. Not too difficult to get out. I think it's one of those things that once the once the bulbs are in, they kind of want to stay there. So I'll just go ahead and I'll pop our white lights in. That's one. Two. They they went in pretty quickly, and we might as well while we're, at, while we're at it have a quick test and let's see how the white lights look. So I'll plug that in there. And plug it back in. I'm very happy with that. I think that is going to be good. Right. Right, I can see from where the speaker is over here the area which I've got for putting this part in here. Again, like I like I did for the speaker, I'm going to chop out very carefully the bit of excess plastic on the mounting frame on the mounting frame which is using a load of space up for us and I'm going rather than stick the circuit board straight down what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it inside this bit of heat shrink just just really to protect everything so I'll pop that in especially these two wires here for the power because um, they look very vulnerable to getting fatigued and coming off so put that in there That's okay, and I've got to remember to leave enough space for the for the plug as well because we're going to have the red wire coming in here, and so that is I think just about where we're going to want everything. I'm going to push it up as close as possible. I'll probably stick it at a slight angle like that. 
just so that we can be sure that we're that we're missing everything. Right, a bit of tape. We're only going to need a small bit. Push this. In fact, it doesn't really matter which way around it goes. I think I'm going to put it like that. I can remove that old piece of tape easily enough. That should be okay. And we're going to want the wire to come right inside. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to do a quick test fit just to make sure that the that the body can, oops, that the that the body can lie down okay. So just push that in there. Put the receiver up in its hole. Move some wires out of the way for a moment. And I would say that we're going to be just about okay. As I said at the beginning of the video, the challenge of this is going to be to try and be neat and tidy with the wires because that really is the key to getting everything to fit. So I, I know which the red and the white lights are so I don't need these labels anymore. Get rid of that. And the red wire here is going to be able to just fold up and, and, and go in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a small tie wrap. I'm just the other way is I could obviously just shorten the wire. But I don't. But I've I've got plenty of room in there, so I don't even need to. So I'll just fold that up like so. in yep I think we're okay with that so that's the rear lights dealt with the other thing to think about is going to be these um, front lights and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend those down and I'm actually going to have the wires going underneath the battery box so while I'm at it I know that the power for the lights is get the right wire which is here 
is going to plug into the receiver into the bind port because that will give me a, a positive and a negative. So I'll just put those in now because it's easier where I can see what I'm doing. That's in. And then it's just a case of carefully folding all the wires in. access to that afterwards. Really what I want to do is to be able to screw the screw the cab down. Front's in the right place. Get it upside down. Get the receiver. into place between the seats which is there and it's all going down nicely so the only excess wire that we've got is in fact these wires here for the front lights them for a moment because I can actually get to the front light. Yeah, these are the only wires which which I um, need to be dealt with. So, <clears throat> so look at look to see the best place to to route them. to me as if tucking them up over the battery holder if I can get them to stay there going to be the best solution and it, that seems okay get, get rid of the label and so we've got a little bit of Y here of an excess Which I think again can be dealt with using a cable tie. Sorry if it's hard to see. I'm trying not to make this job look easier than it really is because I think it can be very frustrating for people when they are watching a video on how to do something and the person makes it easy by doing everything difficult off camera and then uh, and then um, people can find it quite hard to follow and certainly 
as I said at the beginning, the hardest part of this job really, I think, is finding a neat place for the vase. Let's put this back in. So if you can't see what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put the plug back in for the white wires. That's it. And then having bunched it up it means that I can actually tuck the wire neatly under there. The receivers come back out of its hole. Put it back in again. That's that. somewhere out of the way right it's all going down nothing is particularly strained the vase nothing's hanging down so it's all nicely out of the way I can put the screws back on the body All looking good so far and then the trunk bed because there's nothing protruding should just go straight back down again making sure making sure that none of the wires are being pinched which they're not which is good right that's just clicked in so I'll keep that one just while I find the screws. There, so the wires can can move easily. Everything's out of the way there. The only thing we need to see now is whether it works or not. So let's see. <clears throat> Turn the lights off a bit for this so that you can see what's going on. Moment of truth. Turn on the transmitter. Ah, we have lights at the front, we have lights at the back. They're actually not too bright and I think that I can safely say that that's probably almost better than I'd, than I'd hoped for. Okay, well, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful, interesting. Please subscribe, you know, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, the next part and possibly the last part of them only running videos that I'm going to be doing of this truck um, are going to be the motor when it comes so I've ordered a larger motor to give it a bit more torque and um, I want to experiment to see if it actually makes it any better or not. Thank you for watching. <laughs>